You know, I really like the GameCube controller. I liked it back in the early 2000s when the GameCube first came out, and I still like using it now. But there is one area that leaves a lot to be desired, and that is anything that relies on this D-pad right here. It's a very small and cramped D-pad to use, especially if you're trying to play something like Game Boy, Game Boy Color, or Game Boy Advance games. But back then, there was a third-party controller that was set up seemingly specifically for this, and that was from Hori. The only problem right now is finding it isn't easy, and if you do, it's like minimum $180 online. Well, a lot of people started sending me links to what seems to be a new controller from old school that is working to replicate that Hori controller. And today, I thought we would take a look at it, and I'd give you guys my thoughts on what is the digital controller from old school. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you like it down below, helps out a ton. And if you're new to the small channel, make sure you subscribe. And I know what you're thinking right away. That's not a GameCube controller at all. It looks more or less like a Super Nintendo controller. And yeah, you'd be right. That was the idea at the time from Hori was to make a design that was similar to the Super Nintendo controller because that's really all you needed for these Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games. First of all, a quick look around the box with some of the features they lay out, which is mostly a 10-foot cable. It's not wireless, which is kind of a shame. I would like to see a wireless option for this because I've become so used to the WaveBird controller. However, they do have it set up with a 10-foot cable, so it's at least uh, manageable and a fairly long cable on that. And looking around it, there's not much else to it. We can see the button layout through the front plastic that appears to mimic what we have with with the GameCube, minus that Z button kind of being in the middle of nowhere there. Anyway, opening it up, you can see there's just nothing really in there outside of the controller, so we can put that to the side and start looking around it. Now, on the right, we do have A, B, X, and Y in a very familiar format here. The buttons pressing them, you know what? They actually have a nice click and spring back to them, so it's not very mushy. And dealing with old school, this was the cheap brand. So if I would order these at the different stores, these were the $10 GameCube controls and they were pretty bad, but for people who just wanted the cheapest controller possible, you would go to the section with all of the different old school controllers, pick one out, and understand that it's probably not going to last very long. However, this one feels a bit different. It's not as hollow feeling, I guess is what I would say. On the left, we do have a D-pad, and unfortunately, the D-pad itself is, I would say, below average. If you press down directly in the middle, you can essentially hit all four points, and it just feels kind of cheap. This being one of the biggest focuses, isn't great. However, we are comparing it to the barely there D-pad on the GameCube, so while this would be a below average D-pad out of the box, it's still more functional overall when you're playing it. I did mention that Z button being in the middle of nowhere, and it also has a different type of feel. I assume they used a different type of rubber membrane underneath, but it has much more tension. It's harder to press down. I don't know if they were going for a different feeling on purpose because the Z button on the GameCube itself does feel different from like A, B, X, or Y. It's just a very odd and awkward button to be kind of in this halfway middle point on the controller. Uh, the rubber buttons in the middle, start, pause, select, those feel very much like a Super Nintendo controller, uh, start and select button. And then L and R at the top have similar feel as well. I do like on the back that they have kind of these, uh, these areas that do push out and make the sides of the controller thicker than the middle part. It does give it an extra bit of grip, which is good because if you hold a Super Nintendo controller now, I do understand how some people with larger hands would run into hand cramping or any of that. So just any added thickness to the outside is very welcome here. The controller itself is light, but it doesn't feel cheap necessarily. And that's kind of surprising coming from old school because I'm used to old school putting out cheaper controllers that feel like they're gonna fall apart when you pick them up. So this was actually a nice surprise. Opening up was pretty easy. There are five different Phillips head screws on the back and that lifts up. We have our shoulder buttons at the top here where we just remove some of those plastics. And then the board will lift up. It's all one piece. It's very easy to get into. And I mostly was curious about some of the rubber membranes, which for A, B, X, and Y on that side, seems to be a bit thicker and a bit higher quality once again than what I've been used to in some of these old school controllers. But the D-pad is the most concerning part about this because I really like this form factor. I like the idea of having a controller like this set up for these different Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games on the GameCube. That D-pad was just not great to use overall. So after picking it up and looking at it, I realized something. This looks very much like the Super Nintendo D-pad 
and the membrane also looks the same. So I have a junked up Super Nintendo controller. I grabbed that, opened it up, pulled the D-pad out. It did need cleaning. This, this controller for the Super Nintendo wasn't working. It got like chewed up by a dog or something. It came in a lot that I picked up way back when, but the D-pad itself still looked good enough. And after cleaning it up, I was able to actually retrofit it into this controller from old school. I did have to do a bit of modification where I trimmed up the outside of the, the D-pad, kind of that disc part. But after I sat that down there and then the rubber membrane closed it up, this controller is awesome. I mean, really, it feels so much more responsive now with this Super Nintendo D-pad and membrane in here. Feels just like a Super Nintendo uh, controller's D-pad. Here's like Crash, for example, and it's so much easier I would say to actually play any of these 2D side scrollers than what we had in uh, with the GameCube controller itself and its smaller D-pad. That is certainly going to leave kind of the 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 blister effect on some thumbs because you're essentially hitting all the points at the same time and just kind of running your thumb around it. This is much more of a you can press and have much more precision with the D-pad. But I will say. Unfortunately, I had to modify it to get it to this point, and I can't exactly recommend that D-pad directly out of the box that Old School is putting out. That said, though, I really like the layout of this controller. I've looked at the Hori controller from time to time, but I mean, it's 180 to $200 to get one, and then that's, I mean, that's used then. You have to hope that it at least comes in working condition and isn't beaten up or really worn pretty badly around some of the buttons or that D-pad. So getting something like this at 22 to 23 dollars and then maybe ordering a, a broken super nintendo controller where you can harvest the d-pad and the membrane from isn't a bad idea necessarily considering it will give you a much better controller for playing these game boy advance games on your TV through your GameCube. I think it's more a shame that old school couldn't get something like this because looking at the, the D-pad that came out of here, its biggest weakness is that the pivot point in the middle is just a little too shallow. So you're able to press all the, all of the uh, points at the same time. And some of them just aren't as responsive as say this one. So I really would like to see old school go a little bit further with this, even if they have to go up to like $30 with this controller, but have really nice materials in here and have a solid D-pad. I actually think that'd be worth it considering the other option is the Hori controller. Oh, also wireless. I, I would like this to be wireless. I know it has a 10 foot cable and that's great, but like we can just have like a piece that we plug in here like the Wavebird does. And then we have just our controller. We can walk across the room with it that would be a lot better too. But you know what? I will give old school some praise for this one because it doesn't feel like an old school product. It, it doesn't feel cheap necessarily. And they have something here that I would like to see them expand on further. But if you're able to drop a Super Nintendo D-pad in there, you know what? I actually recommend this. I think this is a good pickup if you're someone who has a GameCube and you're using it to play some of these Game Boy games on it with the Game Boy Player. I will say this, you can't really play a lot of GameCube games with it. I, I tried, this is not detected as the joystick. It is legitimately detected as this D-pad. So if a game on the GameCube needs that joystick, which like, 99% of them do, you're not gonna be using this. But let me know what you guys think about the old school digital controller for the GameCube with these Game Boy games. Is it is this layout interesting to you? Or you think it just looks really strange for the GameCube itself? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.